had a mum here is very hard because she was our rock, our support, our everything really, not having a father in our life. She said to us, if anything happens to me, you three kids stick together. You think everything's fine in your life, then a bomb explodes in front of you and everything changes forever. It'll never be the same again. Angela Edwards needs a miracle. We won't give up, will we? Never. We'll find something. Not just for herself, but for her three kids. Love you. I love you too. Just killing her slowly and slowly and from the inside. She can't see it, you can't hear it. No, you can't feel it, it's just doing it. She used to always say, as long as you have your health, nothing else matters. And now that's sort of been taken away. Do you believe miracles happen? With someone like Mum, it's bound to happen with someone special like her. So it's just a waiting game, really, and just, you know, hope, hope for some luck to come our way. Then the most unlikely angel steps in. Thought you might want to have a look. What have you been doing? A complete stranger offering the gift of hope. Why did you do that? They needed somebody to put up their hand and help them. So a group of friends and I decided to do just that. It feels pretty good. Everybody feels pretty good. Real good. What you're about to see would have happened regardless. TV cameras rolling or not. Nothing has been orchestrated or set up. We were just lucky enough to witness something unforgettable. Angela is 40. Late last year, she was diagnosed with terminal bowel cancer. Now, originally, she uh, went to the doctors with lumps in her belly, and they told her that it was just like a cyst in her belly, and that, and it's, no, don't worry about it, you know, we'll, we'll get some scans done, but there was no rush. Like, she uh, eventually had the scans done, and you know, it revealed it was cancer. Her eldest son, Brody, has just turned 18. The cancer is like uh, strangling the body, strangling the insides, which means she can't, you know, can't drink, can't eat, can't go to the toilet, can't walk, and it's slowly shutting different parts of her body down as it's spreading throughout it. They told me after the surgery I had last week that there was nothing surgically they could do for me. The tumour had spread too far in my bowel. As the disease begins to shut down her vital organs, every second she spends with her kids is now precious beyond belief. I don't want to go anywhere. I've got my family, my beautiful kids, and they're my life. They're my world. I'm not going, I'm not leaving, so I'm going to fight everything I have to to um, be here. I'm not giving up. Since Angela was diagnosed five months ago, the kids have been left to take care of themselves. All right, so who's washing, who's wiping tonight? Do you want to stack the dishwasher and I'll just wash up this stuff? Yeah, we still need someone to unstack it who wants to do that when it's done. I'll do it. I've got to step up now with the oldest and do mum's job. And she always said, you know, I promise I won't let anyone hurt you. And I've now made that promise to them too. But you know, it's, it's a bit harder because I don't have that older person then to lean on myself. But I want to make sure we stick together and stay on top of everything. We'll try our best to do it. Even harder is the fact that kids have never had a father of their own. We've been separated from our dad for a long time. We haven't seen him for a long time. Don't have contact with him anymore. So Brody has decided to take charge. 
I think it would probably be more hard as well because we haven't really had a dad. Like, he's had no one to sort of learn off, so he's so, sort of just, I don't know, being a manly version of mum. Like. Younger sister Georgia is 16. Little brother Logan is just 14. We just take it, yeah, one day at a time. Just make sure, call up mum, make sure she's fine. At the moment, like, she's the main concern and worry. And we take care of the little things that's going on and the big things will take care of themselves. Was there a time when you thought they wouldn't be able to handle it? Sometimes, yeah. I mean, you see they're, you know, they're, they're frightened, but they're trying to stay strong for me. But they're very strong. While family and friends are never far away, should the worst happen, Brody will become his brother and sister's keeper, their legal guardian. He wants to be the dad of the family. He wants to be the one that steps in and takes over now and says, nothing will happen to you and to me. Nothing will happen to you, Mum. He's our protector. But he can't protect them from what may come. What if, you know, Mum does go unless she does pass on? Like, how, how are we going to deal with life now we've got bills to pay and the mortgage and, you know, everyday expenses, lighting, power, electricity, you know, so that, that's probably the scary bit. And it just hits me, like, I, 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 I look at them, they say, what are we going to do? And I go, I, I, I don't know what to tell them, you know, and, and it's, it's beyond me and I just, you know, I have to walk away and be away from it because I don't know how to answer that for them. I don't know what to tell them. Hey, Mum. How are you? Are you asleep, Leah? Some days are harder, like, than others. As, like, I don't know, just with little things, like, that you just want to tell Mum, like, you just want to run home and tell her from school something that happened. Like, it could be so stupid, but you just want... It's just something. Everyone would have the same bond with their mother. There's just something that you have to... that you can tell her that you can't tell anyone else and stuff. It's just kind of hard to be sort of missing out on that. You know, I can't afford on an apprentice wage to keep this house. And, you know, and I don't want to leave this house. You know, we've had so many good memories here. You know, it's our home, really. It's not a house, it's our home. And that's, this is where we've grown up. They live two hours away from the hospital in a house that's seen better days. The renovations were her dream. She had them set out how she wanted them. She's always said, I'm coming home and I'm going to finish this house. Like, she's going to finish it no matter what. Just nothing extraordinary. Just comfortable and nice and what everyone should have. A year and a half later, it still sits. Neglected, run down and dangerous. It's been hard to get done especially get finished uh, since I've um, become ill. They don't let the adversity get, get them down. They don't come across and say, oh, why has it happened to me? Hugh Jarvis is their next door neighbour. For months, he's watched their pain, but not once has he heard them whinge. I said, bugger this, I put a text message together, sent it out to everyone that I knew, and the response was absolutely overwhelming. At the other end of the phone was Mick Emerton. I said, what have we got to do? He said, they've got an unfinished house to explain the situation. And um, I said, do you hear me? I said, well, mate, I promise you one thing. I know a lot of good people, a lot of good people. Mick spread the word of Brody's pledge and Angela's plight. There's just been so many sad things going on lately. Um, There's just been too much sadness around. We needed something. We needed some good. Oh, this is bullshit. It's just all going downhill, basically. Just surely there has to be some good luck coming. But what happens next has little to do with luck. 
While the kids are in Sydney visiting mum, Mick and his mates, all 200 of them, and then some, found their way into the family home. It started with just a few mates and we planned on just chipping in a few bucks herself and getting it up the stage and and it just snowballed. So it'll be more than 95% of the people that have that are here and who have come yesterday. They don't even know the family, they don't know the children, they don't know the mother. They just know they've got to look after their own community and um, everybody can do this. Brush, somebody, give me a brush. We've got a hand here. What do use, boys? Mick provides most of Newcastle with its poultry. To the locals, he's known as Chicken Mick. And today, he's ruling the roost. Can you do that bit of downpipe? It's annoying the crap out of me. Their mission is to renovate and refurbish the entire house inside and out. The best grass in town. But there's a catch. One weekend is all they have. I caught him standing around. He's yours. Give him something to do. No standing around. <laughs> Mick is determined to complete it in just 48 hours before the kids come home. We've all got kids and you'd hate to think yourself in that same spot, you know. You'd like to help, think that other people would help you out as well. So it's just giving back, I guess. The heart got involved and took over. Everyone's got a heart somewhere. It's just engulfed everyone. You know, you help your mate, don't you? Got it. It's really nice to see how everyone has just got together and, and had a go. Oh, uh, yeah, broken wrist and, yeah, I was just trying to help out today. These managers, uh, accountants, lawyers, dentists, everyone contributed. ICU nurse and David my husband's a solicitor so we don't usually paint and do practical things. Yeah we're a little bit we're a bit worried we push for time uh, we wanna we wanna get this house finished. Back at St George Hospital in Sydney Angela and the kids have no idea what's happening back at home. Oh, hi. Logan, behave for your brother and sister. Love you too, see you soon. Everyone normally needs a reward for doing something, but what's your reward? The kids' faces. <laughs> the kids' faces, I go, wait to see the smile on their face. It's 4.30 p.m., almost 48 hours since the renovations began. Brody, Georgia and Logan are just moments away. Oh, holy shivers. Holy dang Georgia, that's yours. Oh, oh, Brody. Is that a car? Yeah. What? Ah. I was like, holy God, looks so much better. <laughs> we have a driveway. Oh, my God. Oh, I don't this, know what to say. This is unbelievable. <laughs> I'm nervous. My heart's racing. Come here. You've done a great job, Mick. It's awesome. That looks beautiful. Buddy. <laughs> what do you think, Mick? This is mad. What do you think? Oh, that's oh, awesome, mate. And Brody, there's your present, mate. Another car. <laughs> yeah, we're really? making sure. Over 100 local businesses pitched in, none of them wanting publicity. Uh, so, you just don't feel bad that he's got a car. I've got you a lawnmower. Oh, thank you. And you're going to whip a snipper. Yeah. <laughs> because she's got to look after this lawn. Just a little bit. Oh. Oh, that's oh. mad. Look at this. Oh, oh my God. God. That's my chair. That's no, no, that, that's my chair. <laughs> this was Angela's dream bedroom. I'm too happy to cry. <laughs> like, it's too, like, overwhelming. This is awesome. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. And, uh, this is your room. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's the bed I was looking at. Wait. Me and Mum went and looked at it. Oh my god. Oh, that's 
chicken. <laughs> Outside, the biggest surprise of all. <laughs> This renovation was never about the home. It was always about the heart. We have to say thank you to everyone. This is so amazing. Like, this is even better than like the real one on TV. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the real one. <laughs> the real one. This is the real one. This is the real. <laughs> this is the real deal, baby. <laughs> the kids are gonna be right. There's people behind them. The kids are going to be fine. They've got a big family now. The house is always open for anyone to come up and have a beer or a barbecue. You know, he's all very well welcome. So. You're only sorry you said that. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Woo! is complete but there's one dream left. I hope to maybe meet Angie one day and, and just let her know that her kids are going to be fine. A stranger, a gift, a mother in need. There you go. Hello. How are you doing, Dom? Good. Oh, I feel like I'm visiting a rock star. My <laughs> heart's beating. <laughs> Feel a bit like a rock star. I bet you do. All this well, attention. Yeah, that was worth it. We've all been pretty busy up your place. I've heard that. I don't really know what's happened, but well, I've heard you're looking after <laughs> everyone up there. Oh, yeah, it's great. There's a lot of us up there looking after things. But um, so you might want to have a look. What have you been doing? Uh, a bit of paint here and there. I'd love to. Oh my God. I don't know what you were pitching on that was. That's exactly perfect. That's beautiful. How gorgeous is it? That's exactly how I wanted it. And that's exactly how it is. How did you do that? We had a spare weekend. Myself and about 200 good friends. That's for us. Yeah. These are good kids. <laughs> You're amazing. Just couldn't get there, could I? Just didn't get there. You just lose a bit of hand. You're there now. This is gorgeous. I just can't believe it. That there's still people like you and you and I don't know who else. All these beautiful people. Is it? They're everywhere. They're everywhere. How do I ever think is it repay you because it's just it's like a dream come true. Angela met Mick just minutes ago. You can't imagine how much joy you've brought. A man who in one weekend did what no doctor could do. He gave her hope, one more reason to live. <laughs> Why even thank you? <laughs> you don't, you don't. But there's another three reasons. If you could say something to Mum, what would you want to say? We're all here for you. Like, stay strong. 
be brave, but you, you're gonna fight it. We know you will. And we love you very, very much and miss you. Mum, we all love you. Um, you're amazing and you can't leave us. I know there's some good luck on its way. My heart's just aching. From us all here, love you. You know, around the world and back again and back again and back again. And um, I'll, I'll never stop looking after Logan George no matter what happens. You can rely on that and I promise of that, you know, but we just can't wait for you to come home. Oh, God, I love my kids. I love them, aren't they? are good. They are, they're special kids, I'll tell you. I'm the proudest mum in the world. Couldn't have hoped for better children. Couldn't have wished for more. What do you want to tell your kids? If they're watching right now. They know, because I tell them every day. And I love you more than anything in the world. I'm so, so proud of you all. So much to live for. My life's not over. What's the first thing you want to do if it's okay and you get to come home with your kids? <laughs> I don't care what it is. I just want to come home. I am coming home. people to take away from all of this. That any community can do it. Basically it just needs a group of people to put their hand up and lead the charge. At the end of the day, do you feel proud? <laughs> nah. <laughs> but it feels pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and you know that I love